I've been interested in functional text in Emacs uh, for a pretty long time, and a good example of those are these uh, this green site link, which you can hover over and get a tooltip or click on and get a menu of, of things that are possible and uh, also get a message in the mini buffer about what that is. So that's an example of a uh, functional link and OrgRef defines about 40 different types of citation links that look like site num, site author, site t, site p, etc. Another way to think about functional text though, and this leverages FontLock to make it green and provide some of those uh, tooltips, um, is to not have org mode links, uh, but to just font lock on words that you want to see the properties of. And so today I'm going to look at chemical elements and look at a way to define what are the patterns that match chemical elements and how do we provide the functionality to get information on them and make them functional. And the idea was to use object-oriented programming, in particular classes and inheritance, to propagate information about uh, particular uh, keywords and use the classes to uh, provide a hierarchy of information. So for example, here uh, are a couple of prototypical chemical elements, hydrogen, argon, sodium, palladium. And argon is a noble gas, sodium is an alkali metal, palladium is a regular transition metal, and you might call hydrogen just a regular element. So how do we encapsulate that information and provide it on top of this, uh, these pieces of text so that they're more functional? So again, the idea here was to encapsulate that information using uh, classes. In Emacs, we can define classes uh, with the EIEIO system. So this is a definition of an element class that inherits from instance tracker, and that's going to store in a variable called um, elements up here all of the instances that ever get created. And each element will have a name, synonyms, and a face, which is what we use with FontLock. Down here we define methods on each uh, uh, that work on an element object. So here this method takes an element object and just returns the atomic mass by looking up uh, in the atomic masses table. And we here define a tooltip for this particular uh, element. And so this just looks up the object class, all of the parent classes, and the atomic mass and constructs a string um, to tell you about it. The function we uh, create here will just search Google for that particular element name. So we'll use that when we click on an element. And finally, we, use, uh, we define a font lock rule which will tell Emacs how to um, fontify a particular element when it finds it. So first we define a map uh, that defines a key for mouse one. So when we click on uh, the string, it will run this function which will run the search on the particular name. Um, then we create a list that contains a regular expression for matching. So this will be a beginning of word and any one of the chemical name or any of the synonyms uh, that are defined for it. And then we define these properties for, for the font lock face, which include uh, the face, the, an element property, a key map, and the help string down here. So all of that just creates a framework that we can now create objects or subclasses in. So first, let's create subclasses. And we start out by defining a new class that we'll call metal. And it inherits from element, and it has a different default face. We can define a noble gas class. And here we override the help echo function so that noble gases will have a different help echo than elements. And then for alkalis, we define that this is an element and a metal, and so that is going to be uh, overriding the element search here so that we just get uh, some different function that runs for alkalize. Maybe they're too dangerous to search. That's a chemistry joke. Okay, so the next thing is to define some uh, instances, and down here we do that in this block where we define a hydrogen element, an argon, noble gas, we put in some synonyms for these. Um, this potassium alkali will turn out to be red, and we define a regular metal. And so once you run this, we now have five instances uh, that you can see down here. So this is one object, the hydrogen, the argon, the sodium, uh, down to palladium. And these all have properties that we can access. 
So the whole point of this exercise was to uh, encapsulate all of that information for font lock and the work that we did up there makes it very simple to now map over each element and get the font lock rule for each one and add it to the keywords. So we go ahead and do that here. And when I run this, you see it turned orange down here and these now have tooltips. This turned a uh, light purple. This one turned red like we expect. If I click on this, then you see we get a web page open up to the Palladium search. If I click on this, we'll get hydrogen. If I look on uh, sodium and click on it, then we see uh, a different function happened and you see the little message down here in the mini buffer like we de uh, decided. And if I look at the tooltip on argon, it's different because we customized that to say I'm not a common element. And again, potassium is red because we changed that color. And these are some of the uh, synonyms that we define for uh, different alkalis, alkali, you know, element, hydrogen. We probably could put, you know, that it is a synonym for one of those uh, element names. All right, that's, that concludes uh, the main points today, is just to work through what happens when we construct a hierarchy of objects and encapsulate the information on the objects and then map over objects to generate font lock rules that are applied to our Emacs buffer.